In March 2020, this abandoned airfield north of the Ukrainian border was desolate. By February 2022, it was filled with Russian troops, armed and seemingly ready to invade. Russian military forces effectively surrounded Ukraine from three sides, from the north in Belarus, in Western Russia from the east of Ukraine, and from the south of Ukraine in the Crimean Peninsula. We're still looking at a huge Russian military buildup and Western warnings that an attack could come at any time. Not just a little bit of destabilization, but a full-fledged blitzkrieg all the way to the Ukrainian capital. Footage of the amassing army, on the ground and in the sea, have been shared online for weeks. Russia has said they will now pull some of these troops back. But the threat of invasion still lingers. What happens next? Shashank Joshi, The Economist's defence editor, is here to answer your questions. Is Putin bluffing? Western intelligence officials and others say they don't think Putin has made his mind up for certain. They think it's likely that he will he will choose to attack, uh, and they think that uh, uh, he may have intended that for a long time indeed. But they're careful to say they don't think a final order has been given. Most of the officials I speak to, uh, both here in Helsinki, uh, in European capitals, uh, in London last week, and in, in other places, they are very, very pessimistic. I think Vladimir Putin has put himself in a difficult position. If he now backs down, having built up what was clearly a completely extraordinary and unusual force to, to threaten Ukraine, he does look weak. He does look somewhat foolish. Um, and he will have to come away from this crisis with something else. Is Ukraine prepared for a possible invasion? Russia has the ability to launch airstrikes, missile strikes, rocket strikes on a scale that would completely overwhelm Ukraine's quite limited air defences. And Russia would also be able to move airborne forces, special forces, uh, and move them very fast in ways that Ukraine probably wouldn't be able to stop. I don't think that Ukraine is going to be able to stop a Russian invasion. However, that doesn't mean that Russia can simply defeat Ukraine because the question is what happens after you win? If they decide they want to inflict regime change in Ukraine, that is going to be a big and bloody campaign that will involve substantial casualties on both the Russian side and the Ukrainian side. What's at stake for both Ukraine and Russia? There's a huge amount at stake for both countries. I think the survival of Ukraine as an independent and sovereign state is in question. For Russia, the stakes are almost as serious because a major conflict in Ukraine would invite absolutely massive economic sanctions. It would destabilize the regime because it would affect the economic interests of the elite and the people around the Putin regime. And the Russian people are not expecting a conflict. They're not expecting a war. And so if they get one, if they see Russian casualties, Russian soldiers being sent home in body bags and Russian warplanes bombing what they were told were their Ukrainian brothers and sisters, I think that would have a profound uh, and, and really destabilizing effect on the Russian political elite. How would an invasion impact the economy of EU countries and the rest of the world? Well, one of the great dilemmas of this crisis is that while America wants tough sanctions on Russia, it's the Europeans who would bear the brunt of those sanctions because they, they, their economies are so much more intertwined with those of Russia. And of course, in many cases, they are dependent on Russia for their energy supplies, particularly their gas supplies. It's going to be a very politically sensitive question, but what I sense is that the mood is not like it was in 2014, when there was a sort of unwillingness to go too far on sanctioning Russian energy supplies. 
I think this time round, there is a European willingness to say Russia has gone too far and it really will have to pay a price. And for example, in Germany, that probably is going to mean shutting down the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline, a very controversial energy project that the Americans want stopped. Uh, and I think we will see some very far reaching sanctions. I don't think it is just a bluff. Does this situation threaten peace around the world? I think for the United States, the decision over how to respond and how many troops to send to Europe would have really far-reaching consequences for America's Asian allies. A lot of people think that if Russia attacks Ukraine, that this will undermine American credibility and that this will encourage, say, China to attack Taiwan, the democratic island that it claims part of its own territory. I'm skeptical of that because I think that America's military commitment to Taiwan is much more substantial than its commitment to Ukraine. Ukraine isn't a member of NATO. It doesn't expect security guarantees from the United States or from others. America does have some uh, obligations towards Taiwan, even if they're a little bit vague. And I think that the consequences of a Chinese attack on Taiwan in Asia would be so much more momentous in terms of the geographic consequences, the military consequences of pushing Chinese power out into the Pacific, that everyone understands that you would, be, you would be unwise to draw too many inferences about American resolve, American credibility, American intentions, just by looking at the Ukraine crisis. How should NATO respond to this crisis? NATO is already responding to this crisis. We've already seen the UK the United States send forces to Eastern Europe. But I think if a war does occur, this would really cement the idea that NATO's core purpose isn't fighting in Afghanistan, it isn't fighting terrorists, it is good old fashioned territorial defense against Russia. And I think the interesting thing that we would begin to see is for many years after the invasion of Ukraine in 2014, the focus was on the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. I think what we're now going to see is much more emphasis on the Black Sea states, on Romania, on Bulgaria, on, on Hungary, on Turkey. The Black Sea is potentially going to be a much bigger focus for NATO in the coming years than it has been in the last five or six. Why has the West's diplomacy with Russia failed so far? There's been absolutely intense Western diplomacy with Russia in a number of ways. We've had Boris Johnson, Joe Biden, Emmanuel Macron, Olaf Scholz of Germany, Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine, all of them talking to Vladimir Putin. I think one of the difficulties at the core of all of that diplomacy is our lack of clear understanding about what Putin wants. Nobody really knows. It's difficult to know which bit of diplomacy is the key to unlocking this crisis and ending it. And that's going to continue to be a problem going forward, except with the added issue that there's now huge amounts of mistrust over Russian intentions, which is going to hang over all of this diplomacy like a cloud. Are there any ways diplomacy could succeed? There's two broad areas where diplomacy could find a way out of this. One of them is on big, high-level military issues between Russia and America. And that could include stuff like mutual limits on medium-range missiles. It could be more transparency around military exercises, confidence-building steps like agreeing not to fly nuclear-armed bombers close to the territory of the other country. There's also a second bucket of issues, which is to do with Russia, Ukraine, and the conflict in the Donbass region of eastern Ukraine. Russia wants to see the government in Ukraine give more autonomy to rebel-held areas in eastern Ukraine. Ukraine doesn't want to do that, but if some compromise could be found, that's another potential area which could allow a diplomatic solution to this crisis. But I, I wouldn't hold your breath on that. I'm Shashank Joshi, I'm Defence Editor at The Economist, and thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more of our coverage of Russia and Ukraine, please click the link.